My first full-time job was as a youth theatre tutor. I was working with Contact Youth Theatre and I was working in Aboriginal communities in detention centres, regional communities and working with Aboriginal kids to look at using the arts as a way of expressing their feelings, their ambitions in the world and I guess arts as an intervention to their lives to make their lives better. I think it's valuable to have a career plan but not to stick to it. Um, uh, T.S. Eliot says, teach us to care and not to care. Like, actually have a plan. Look, if I was, to, if I was successful in my, my career plan, I'd be a high school teacher teaching drama and dance. So, you know, along the way, different opportunities came up and I said, yeah, this is a good opportunity, let's go for that. And so I think that blind ambition, a, you know, following a plan blindly is not actually going to be that rewarding. Sure, you'll get to achieve what you want to achieve, but if you leave yourself open to experiences and influences and different people to come across, you know, cross your path and take you somewhere else, I think that's a more rewarding and, and true artistic career, that we are staying open to the different influences that come into our lives. It takes just as much energy to have a bad project as it does to have a good one, and we never know what those things are. I think a really successful project is when you've set out your intentions, how you, what you want to achieve, and you go about achieving them. Sometimes that means that the project may not be successful in everyone else's eyes, like it may not reach its box office target, it may not uh, kind of permeate the zeitgeist in the way that you want it or whatever, but if you've set out what your expectations are, what your intentions are, and you give yourself something that you can manage or, or measure yourself against, that's what creates success, I think, for me as an artist. We've got to remember that one project doesn't make a career. You know, a body of work is created over a number of years and you've got to keep learning and growing from that. So for me, I set myself uh, a number of uh, issues, a number of things I want to achieve. Uh, I, I articulate what my intention is. And at the end of that project, I start to measure myself up against those things and say, did I actually achieve what I wanted to achieve? Is this a successful project? If I was to be a lead role in a movie, it would be from a classic 1940s, like Citizen Kane, an Orson Welles film, where, for me, that role uh, in, in, in Citizen Kane, where it's actually about, the film's about innovation, uh, innovation in, in terms of techniques. It's about a, a historical figure that, in fact, changed so much of what we think about in terms of the media. Um, and it's telling a story that is emotionally and sentimentally kind of, it's got a really good vibe about it. So I always like people to cry if they're, if they're, they're doing things because I'm such a sentimentalist. I am a Macintosh devotee. Like the iPad, the, the, the laptop, the, the airport, the iPhone, I've got it all. And I think because for me, Technology is actually an extension of an aesthetic. Technology isn't just about function. Technology for me is something about saying, this is a beautiful object, this is the way I look at the world. It's aesthetically pleasing, and so that everyone needs to engage in something that's aesthetically pleasing. In fact, one of the things I did here was, um, and I'm, just, I'm not quite finished yet, uh, all the staff members in the office, I've bought a water jug, like a beautiful water jug, not these kind of crappy things, but beautiful kind of things that on eBay and stuff, because I said that in our everyday life we have to have aesthetically pleasing objects. We have to engage with things that are built by artists every day, and so that's what I've done. Absolutely no one. I travel in a bubble, I don't want to talk to anyone. On a long plane flight, that's when I get all my work done. Uh, somehow about pressure, you know, pressurised cabins, I can sit and finish all my emails, I can do all my reading, I don't care who's sitting next to me, I'd rather have a spare seat so I can put all my stuff on it. My typical day starts around 7, uh, between 7 and 7.30 at the office, and I start to look through all the things that I have to do for the rest of the day, <laughs> um, planning, and then I, like yesterday as an example, I literally had back-to-back -back meetings for about six hours. Well, that's not true, I went and had a lunch meeting as well with someone, so just either half hour, an hour long meetings. And then at the end of the day, somewhere around five to about seven, I spend just kind of
collating my notes and thinking about what I've gone through and then I go off to the theatre and see a show. So my days are easily 12 to 15 hour days, just as a matter of course.